Hello, and welcome to CrossBlitz Dev Talk, where the devs and I sit in a Discord call to talk about our RPG deck builder CrossBlitz, which is currently in early access on Steam. Today's episode is about the five factions of our game, uh, how they were designed, and upcoming updates for each. Sit back and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's start by introducing ourselves. Hi, uh, my name is Phil Giarusso, and I'm one of the developers on CrossBlitz. I don't know if you want more info than that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's great. More than enough. Uh, and yeah, I'm Digital Hamster, community manager for CrossBlitz. Yeah, if you ever need to address me during this call, just say, you know, Digital Hamster, because because I'm a bit paranoid. But but hey, you went on and said your full name, so. <laughs> I mean, my last name is all on the internet at this point. <laughs> all right. So uh, introductions are out of the way. Let's get into the five factions. And first question I have for you, Phil, is why five factions? Um, You know, I don't really know exactly why it came out to be five <laughs> factions, but it was more so to cover uh, the five different I guess categories of play styles that that we had in mind for cross splits. And so basically Tom Tom came up with the different play styles first. They fit into five categories. Then he's like, hey, we need five main characters. Mm. One for each faction to fit into this. So in that design document, did he write like, okay, war faction, knives, guns, explosives, and people with anger issues? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know if he was that specific, but oh, yeah, it was okay. more of just like war, like, you know, uh, effects revolving around characters damaging each other to get buffs and stuff. And then you came up, is that, and, and then you came up with the cute dog bomb? Fidget, uh, yeah. Fidget? I mean, Fidget came way later, but like, I can't remember if Tom was like, I want a dog that explodes or he just wants like, a, a dog that or, or, or if he just said, I want a some kind of character that that blows up <laughs> is that is that what your day-to-day -day interactions sound like just tom sending you a message like hey i want a dog that explodes can you yeah, design I mean, that pretty much no no like <laughs> no like usually he'll outline a bunch of cards that we need um, um and then he'll he'll put all the info for each card like if he has a name for it he'll put the name he'll he'll give like a brief character design description and like I don't always have to like adhere to those. They're, those are kind of like, hey, this is what I was thinking. But if you want to tweak it or have another idea, like feel free to mess around with the with the design. Um, and then he'll list like the stats and like what the card text does. Um, but yeah, that's usually how Tom will will present new cards. And like he does a lot of design work, like himself trying to plan out how these cards are going to work together before he gives me that list. Sounds good. Sounds great. Uh, before we dive into each uh, individual faction, lore-wise, what does a faction mean? Like, is it is it like a Hogwarts house? Is it you have if you have a certain personality, you know, there you go, you belong to this faction, or is it related to your race? It's something you're born, born into. into no, I mean, it's not an actual. It's not an actual lore aspect of the game. It's more okay. of just a gameplay first mm. way of categorizing cards. But yeah, so when we first were uh, designing factions, like when we were outlining all the different races and species in the world of Crossblitz, um, I kind of roughly assigned each faction the types of people that would be in them just to give us like a loose outline when we're designing cards. So like, for example, with War, it was like, well, Redcroft is the main character. He's like this lion dude. I want more than just lion. So it's like, okay, make the beastkin race of characters that can be all types of like mammal beast-like creatures, like wolves and, and, you know, tigers and elephants, like all that kind of stuff fits like into that beastkin race. And then I, and then usually we assign those types of character, uh, those types of characters into the war faction because it kind yeah. of, because it also kind of links up with the vibe of that faction in general, like that more war, yeah, mongery, yeah, violence, predator, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. And then you have like the fortune faction where I'm like, well, you have the little, uh, um, the little mice characters, the little folk is what they're called in, mm -hmm. in cross splits, and like they fall more into that more mischievous, greedy, 
um, good with their hands. Oh, kind of. also like because they're good with their hands, they make robots. The... Right, exactly. They tinker uh... with the golems and stuff. That's why a lot of them are there. I mean, like, like, like they're just very clever and dexterous, and you know. So, do they use the golems to like rob people, or is it like? Well, in a future campaign, you'll learn a little <laughs> bit more about that. But yeah, I, I, I mean, they use golems for all types of stuff they're basically like the robots of of the cross blitz world um and so when you when you see those cards and use those cards and you can play with them in uh tusk tales because like gizmo who's a golem is one he of is the, the cutest golem by the way right i, I know yeah yeah he's he, he's top tier in in a in a in a the cuteness factor for sure um but yeah i mean like that's basically how we kind of went up about giving each faction a little more character. Yeah, I mean, when you see the cards in the game, you definitely can tell each faction's uh, unique personality. Like, take the war faction, for example. There's there's red everywhere. Their minions are heavily armed. Uh, and, you know, this faction just screams, you know, violence and anger, especially because one of my favorite cards, which is the Berserker, and, you know, a lot of players have been asking why he isn't called the Bearser. I know. Like, we should we should have done that. Like, his name was decided before I did the design. Uh -huh. So when I saw we need, like, a like a crazy warrior kind of guy, I'm like, well, I'll do, like, a big bear because that's pretty uh, threatening. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just didn't notice it forever until way later. And, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure internally Tom and I have both thought at some point, should we just change him to like Bearserker? Let me just didn't. But now it's kind of more fun that he's not, so then everyone brings it up all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, do you have any upcoming archetypes or cards for this faction you could share with us today? Or did you sign an NDA? Um, I mean, <laughs> I did not sign an NDA, but I guess, you know, I'm automatically under NDA for myself no i mean we do have more cards coming um mm -hmm. i know there's a ton of that there's there's a good amount of cool new cards coming in a later story that's not uh that's not the upcoming story the one after that okay. um and it's basically a sub archetype of the of the blood boil stuff and it involves using this cool mechanic with something called blood tokens so it's almost like a new is it like how glimmer works i know like that glimmer? but it works a little differently than that all right well exciting stuff coming up for the war faction uh let's move on to the chaos faction which is one of my favorites because there's a heavy rock and roll element but also a witchy dark magic type of thing going on so how did you come up with that uh mix of you know concepts so at first it was mostly just kind of like dark darker spooky magic kind of thing mm -hmm. and then when we were designing violet's story and because she's a pop star tom wanted to lean more into the whole music aspect of, of violet's character which i think was a very good idea so yeah. he started coming up with card ideas that kind of play with that music component more and then he and then you know through all that the the entire faction kind of pushed a, more into that direction. Yeah, I haven't seen that in many games before. Well, if well you... it is pretty funny, though, because, like, Hearthstone apparently released some new expansion last year that had oh. a ton of music. That had a ton of music stuff in it, and we're like, we had that first! No <laughs> one better say that we took this from Hearthstone! Um, but yeah. And, like, I'm sure other card games have touched on it before. Okay. Uh, anything upcoming for the Chaos Faction you uh, you can share with us today? Um, I'm trying to think. There is this little, like, again, like, another kind of sub-archetype involving um, dancing. And like, and, like, and, like, dancer kind of characters. Oh. And I know a lot of, you know, I know, like, games like uh, Fire Emblem and stuff. Like, there's, like, a dancer class and, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, yeah, we, we are playing with i with ideas like that behind the scenes too so so looking forward to it okay uh let's move on to the fortune faction the yellow greedy cloak and dagger but also robots kind of faction 
I don't, I don't know if that was a good summary, <laughs> but yeah, it seems like there's a lot of craftiness and in inventing stuff. Inventing new things or trying to lock pick a door, you know, mm. like anything with like little mechanisms, like, you know, they want to get their hands on that and, and, and mess with that and develop new tech. Speaking of new tech, golems. And this might seem like a stupid question, but are they made out of actual gold? They're, they're just yellow because I, I wanted them to fit the, <laughs> the fortune color theming. But I also l liked how giving them that yellow palette kind of sets them aside from a lot of other robots or mechs or golems in other games because it kind of gives them a unique a unique look. Um, so I've been keeping that, that visual theme throughout them. Um, and I have like other design motifs that I try to maintain throughout throughout the golem designs too, such as um. So like they like they usually fall between two types of eye eyes. So like oh. either they have like this dark hole in their head and you see these two eyes peering out, or they have these kind of like big lifeless bulbs instead for their eyes. Um, mm. And it's usually the more the golems that have a little bit more character to them and a little more. A little more sass might look more like Gizmo and how he has like that black kind of like hole into his head and they have the eyes. And then the ones that are more kind of just like you are a slave to our needs, those ones are a little more, they look a little more dead inside. <laughs> like they've been working in the service industry for too long. <laughs> exactly. So if you had a bunch of golems working at McDonald's, throw some of those lifeless golems in there to just, you know, take orders and stuff. Whereas like Gizmo would be a manager in the back actually. <laughs> making sure they're doing their job <laughs> okay well that's an insight into golem hierarchy i didn't know i would get today but i'll take it uh again any upcoming changes new cards for this faction well there's a hero coming soon there's a new hero coming soon it is a yeah. fortune character um i'm sure people basically know who it is if you're in the discord um but yeah uh i mean there'll be a ton of new stuff to see with that obviously it's not just golems it's a lot of like taking cards from from your opponent or stealing stuff stealing stuff or you know using uh um glimmer which was mentioned before which is like a special type of currency you use in a fight that you can use to basically spend on better effects for cards that you have and you also work as a shield if i remember correctly right yeah and then you also have traps which is a whole thing too oh my god i hate traps yeah they're super fun to use but super frustrating to play against but you'll be able to use traps when you're playing the fortune facts so it'll feel good Finally. when you're Finally. screwing over you know the opponent uh okay let's go now to the balance faction which i would describe as martial arts with snow and ice and sometimes fire mostly ice it's mostly yeah. ice but there's other kinds it, yeah it was i i think originally balance was more going to be like spells like you know a lot of different spells and then we oh. kind of started leaning more into the martial arts component cuz cuz once we designed our our balance hero which is um seto when he was designed he was designed to be more of like a monk like a monk martial artist mm -hmm. so we decided to lean more into that which is cool because it's you know it opens up a lot of different design opportunities with different characters and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's also the whole the whole freezing mechanic, which is which falls under balance. Um, and then something we've talked about a little bit in, in um, Discord is that there's going to be a whole like cooking archetype also with balance. So like you can use different ingredients to create different uh, food, and then those those different foods are different cards so like i don't want to go into more detail really but yeah i mean the balance has like a lot of different i'm just trying to figure out what ties martial arts cooking and ice into the whole balance concept be balanced one must consume a balanced diet oh so so food oh, <laughs> food cooking and and appreciating your food and eating that is all important. I love how hard you're trying to make sense of it for us. I appreciate. No, but that. honestly, it's. I, I, I think like freeze being part of that too. I think it is just um, related to the fact that 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 faction has evolved a lot. And like I said, it was more kind of spell focused before. So like freeze was like where a lot of those spells. Um, were like originally designed when we first started making the game um and and because we like those mechanics and those characters we, we wanted to keep them still so like you know they stayed in the balance faction uh 
but then you have characters that are you know more associated with the balance faction like like i was talking about those bird characters before the wing bloods like like i originally was thinking there'd be a lot of those in the balance faction which is true there are um and they like to mess with magic a lot and because because there's a there's a place on the world map of crossbow it's called um it's called wing rise peak uh sorry sorry my bad wing rise crest is the name of the play <laughs> okay. and and there's a there's a magic academy there and a lot oh. of these wing bloods spend time there uh like basically studying the world and studying magic and there's a lot of frost magic involved with that I really love all these lore tidbits that you're dropping here and there. Like you do that a lot on Discord. I feel like at some point we have to actually sit down and talk about the actual world of Crossblitz. In fact, guys, let us know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. I think uh, we can head to. I think we can head on to the last faction, which is nature, um, tree people, dinosaurs. Uh, and mushrooms and plants. Right, so it's all revolved around nature and plants and things you might find in the woods and characters that really appreciate nature and try to protect nature. So, like, mm. that's why you have the Sprout Elves who are part of that faction, because they're... They, they follow the classic trope where, like, there's always this group of people who basically dedicate their lives to preserving nature and you know living along um alongside it without trying to constantly influence it all the time they're a little more cohesive than the, than the balance one we <laughs> no, just no, balance about. was very cohesive once you understood the balanced meal part <laughs> so one one thing i wondered about the nature faction is how do they coexist with all the modern stuff going on in the world of crossbits like robots rock and roll explosive that's the problem okay because nice. in the world of cross blitz you have this now this is more part of the underlying story that will come into play more as people play future campaigns and mm -hmm. start connecting dots but you have this conflict between modernization and like all this new tech you know mm -hmm. coming into play and all these new people coming to the island because like all the races and species of of people on this island are not all all native to the island you know it's it's kind of like all these ex all these explorers coming from overseas and then taking resources from the island like mana which is a main thing that is kind of used in everything mm -hmm. um and that kind of being exploited a little bit by all these new people and all this new tech coming back to mana because a lot of people seem a bit confused. Uh, sometimes I read player comments or like, what is this purple goo thing? And it's mana, right? But I believe the mall paws in yep. uh, Timberton, in Violet Story, they actually mine mana. They do, yep. There's so... a nice little info dump by, by Mawson. <laughs> if you're in the mines in Violet Story, where he talks a little bit about it and gives some context. So is mana in a crystal form, but it can also liquid so basically when you originally so basically maw paws mine mana from the roots of that giant tree in the center of the island so on the title screen you see that big red tree so that tree sits at the top at, at the top of the largest mountain on the island which you can see you can see the map like the world map there's like this uh it's called timberstone like you know, th that's the name of the mountain there's a big tree on top so those roots grow into the mountain and then the maw paws mine them so that's why when you're exploring the mine you start seeing all these like mini trees and like roots and stuff oh so it's like sap exactly they mine the sap and then they they process the sap into tons of different stuff so like so like mana shards or like mana gems and all this stuff and then it's also used to power different tech so like if you're walking around the music festival in violet story you'll see like little contraptions tied to like the lights that have like little bits of mana in them because it's like powering all this stuff so it's basically like an energy source for everyone um okay. but when it's being harvested and used by all, all these other people and it and then it starts to feel like like you know the balance of things is getting out of whack like you know that's when problems start start coming up which is like you know it it, it is like kind of like a metaphor for the world 
our our actual world and you know yep. when we start to take too much and then other people who who rely on this um this resource and they've had it for all their life and they've you know kind of respected it and they don't ever take too much but now that's kind of uh shifting as all these new people come to the island and they just you know play. like they want a piece of the pie right because mm. there's so much wealth to be had by by taking advantage of this yeah because cross stone isle is kind of the new world that has untapped potential and resources uh any new upcoming mechanics or cards for the nature faction yeah i mean i mean so <laughs> People have seen like shrubosaur stuff, so like those are basically the plant dinosaurs that um, that exist in the nature faction. There'll be more of that stuff. Uh, we have an entire archetype that hasn't really been explored much in the game yet. That has to do with like towers and different buildings you play on the board that grant certain buffs and such. And then you also have like um, archers who have all these unique mechanics tied to like these ranged attacks so yeah and 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 that ties in with the whole like sprout elf thing where a lot of them use bows to and, and the sprout elves they're very like they're pretty militarily organized aren't they like lieutenant juniper is an actual officer in the sprout elf army so basically there's two factions of sprout elves Oh which will God. be explored <laughs> this goes time. so much deeper wow okay no there's so no well i mean yeah because like with with the lore like i mean for us we spent a lot of time developing the world like you know when we first began development because it gave us a, a ground to start pulling from and then coming up with cards and places and mm. and characters and such now granted things always evolve so like we definitely add new stuff as we go but we're like oh man wouldn't it be cool this but yeah there's like there's basically two factions of sprout elves um one where our uh nature hero is part of and then another one that's kind of conflicted with them and they want to approach this new world and all this modernization all these new people coming to the island in a different way than 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 uh that our nature hero and her side kind of do it. So there's like an, almost like an inner conflict within the Sprout Elves, basically. So like one of them is more militarized, so like you see some of that stuff. Well, looking forward to Sprout Elf storylines in the future. I believe that's all the time we have today. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please let us know if, well, if we should make more. And if there's other topics you'd like us to cover, or if you have any questions for the devs, let us know in the comments or on our social media channels, and we'll respond to them in the next episode. Thank you again for listening and have yourself a great day.